You see, but we didn't really read the book. It's an amazing thing. Nobody really reads it. You see, we get worked up emotionally. This is human nature. Something that hurts us, we have no time to think. If I was here with you during those days, I would have joined you in your marches, in your crying, in book burning, I would have been one with you. But you see, I'm at a distance. And from a distance, you see more things than what you are now directly involved. You are in it. You are under pressure, under attack. You are barbarians. They, you remind them of Hitler. Hitler burned books, so you might also create a Nazi party here and you know, overtake the country. All these fears, they well up, and now you have to battle with this. Now, I'm qualified to speak on this for a number of reasons. Number one, you see, I am an elder brother of yours. To some of you, I'm an uncle. Some of you can call me grandpa. I'm an old man, number one. Number two, I have read the book. Nobody can say, well, look, did you read the book? And say, no, but you know, this is what people say. From here, say, so no, I read the book, number two. Number th three, I'm one of you. You see, to everybody, I'm a South African. But if I tell you that I carry a document with me, a British passport. British passport, 63-year-old passport. You believe it? There would hardly, hardly be a single senior citizen in Britain who would be having a British passport 63-year-old. If you open it, you'll see my picture when I was 9-year-old, what I looked like then. And I cherish it. Well, by God, I cherish it because of that picture more than anything else. But now I value it. I'm a Britisher by, by birth and by holding a British passport. I would, I, I would be looking forward to the pleasure of creating a senior citizens, British passport holders of 60 years and more. If your father or anybody, your grandfather has got a passport six, 60 years and over, let me know you would like to create a society in Britain. <laughs> so I am qualified. Now what, in retrospect now, because it's far away from all those happenings, now I can talk more freely, I said, look, what I would have done, I, I couldn't have, if I was in the midst of you, I couldn't have thought all these things out. It's impossible. See, when you are under pressure, under turmoil, and the mass hysteria that can be generated by things like this, you can't think. So I'm not too clever. What I'm going to tell you now is, hey, this guy's too clever. I'm not, wallah, I tell you, I'm not clever. I am not benefiting from other people's experiences. I have been watching your TV debates on these topics. People send me the videotapes, I watch them. From Britain, from America, and I'm getting educated by those debates. I said, what's wrong? Why don't these people tell the fellow, you know, to the, the when questioned, what is it that's creating such, such, such temper, such anger in you? What makes you so angry? So the guy says, you know, he spoke slanderous things and he stored filthy language. One of these programs I'm watching, the nearest a brother came to answering. He's prodded. What did he say? And I watch his face. See, the camera was on his face. And I can see that he's in hell. You know, he doesn't know how to get out of that situation. So he takes a deep... He said, he, what, what, what is it? So he said, he used words like, Ben Chod. <laughs> Fifty million people, the Americans are listening. What did it mean to them? Nothing. And you get enraged, you want to go and kill the man for that? What did he say? I said, our cases have been going by default. If you read the book, here, if you took the right approach, the approach even now is not too late. I will show you ways and means. Very cheaply you can get things done, very cheaply. Not with the gun, not with the bomb, not with the stone. Very cheaply by God. I'll show you how it can be done.
I said, you should have contacted one of these Tory MPs. Tory, you call it Tory. You know this conservative party, Margaret Thatcher's conservative party. Tory, how you pronounce it? Tory. One of these Tory MPs and showed him, he says, look, have a look at this, sir. Our Iron Lady, our Prime Minister, this fellow Rushdi, show him the page, open the page, page 269. He calls our Maggie torture. Torture, not Thatcher, torture. One sentence, one word sentence, torture, full stop. Then he calls her Maggie the bitch. You know that? He is calling our Prime Minister Maggie the bitch and he got away with it. Then on page 80 of his book, he says, the British. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how I'm going to say that. <laughs> page 80, he says, the sister, F-U-C-K-I-N-G, British. You see, he's thinking in Gujarati or Hindi. He's born in Bombay. He wants to use the word that, word that our, our, our representative used on the TV, Ben Chod. No, he's thinking in that language and he translates it, but not at that stage. When he uses that word, no translation. Sister fucking British. This is what he's telling them. You fuck your own sisters. British, whether you are Pakistani British or English British or Sikh British or Jamaican British, you fuck your own sisters. You take that? You take that? I said, tell this to the MP, look at this, sir. And this guy on page 169, I'll come to it later in detail, he has sex with the Queen. He even prohibits with the Queen. I will come to that. I tell you, immediately the book would have been banned. Immediately, no, no arguments. But you were crying about yourself. You know, he saw my mother, he saw my fathers, our spiritual fathers, our sahabas, he did this, he did that. It's a good luck to you. You are a people, you know, you have been a challenge to us for over a thousand years. You conquered once Christian lands, never to be retaken. The whole of North Africa was Christian. Whole of North Africa, Egypt, El Morocco, Algeria, Libya, the whole lot was Christian. The whole of the Middle East, Syria, Palestine, what you call Lebanon, all this was Christian. You came and ruled Spain for 800 years. You knocked at the gates of Vienna. You have it a challenge. And even now, when you are down and out in the gutter, even now you tell the guy, he says, look, sir, don't drink. Drinking is bad. Gambling is bad. No dating, no dancing, no courting. Don't eat the pig. Don't you? Walata kulu salasa. <laughs> Don't say Trinity. Look, you are a thorn in his side. Now for a change, your own child, one of your own, he's put a pineapple up your backside. See how it feels now? He's getting sadistic pleasures. He's getting pleasures in our pain. You cry, you wail, you burn books, you march, he's happy. He's getting a subtle revenge on you, through your own. The way was to turn the tables. Bas, I don't know how, it, how you address them. I don't know how you address them here. I would say, Bas, Bar Pakka Saheb. Look what this guy is saying about you. Not about me, my mother. About you, your mother, your sister, your wife, your daughter. You show him and you see how he reacts. Some fellows tell me that the British are insensitive. They are insensitive. They have grown a thick skin. You can tell them what you like. You can swear them as you like. They don't react. I said, don't take a chance. You're making a mistake. He's highly sensitive. But his sensitivity is selective. <laughs>